This sociopath loves torturing elementary conniving bandits to satisfy his infinitely voluminous thirst for death. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Theorizer, and Home Alone traps are some of my favorite slapstick ever. Like, honestly, who doesn't like them? Dehydrated pufferfish, maybe. But I, in fact, love them so much that I've sort of made it a tradition on this channel to use physics to figure out just how deadly some of the booby traps really are. Last year at Christmas, I covered Home Alone 1, and now, one year later, I'm going to do Home Alone 2, the one people seem to remember by its absolutely maniacal traps. Let's just start, shall we? I'm going to start with this trap. Harry is standing on a teeter-totter-like thing, and Marv jumps on the other end. Harry is sent sky-high and lands on a car, crushing it somehow. But how high would Harry really be sent? Let's figure it out. But first, listen. I'm going to do the math on screen, but I won't make it too complex. You see, the problem is, I have tons of people who just want the answers and don't care about how I really get them. And then I have tons of physics people who tear me apart for not showing my calculations, so I will just show them in the corner. Marv is played by Daniel Stern. We need his weight for our math. Unfortunately, Daniel Stern has never revealed his weight. How perfect. Great. So we'll need to estimate it. Men that are 6 foot 4, like Daniel Stern, weigh in at roughly 200 pounds, or 90 kilograms, so we'll go with that. Marv runs toward the board at about 5.2 meters per second, which is about 20 kilometers per hour, or 12 miles an hour. If we want to find out how high Harry is sent, we must start by finding the total energy Marv puts onto the board. That's his movement energy and the energy he has from falling down onto it. Marv falls down onto the board from about 1.64 meters. The formulas are displayed here. Filling in all we need, we discover that Marvin uses an energy of 2,664.76 joules to send Harry flying up into the sky. Since this lever is the same distance on both sides, it makes everything much easier. And basically, it means that this same energy is the energy that will be sending Harry up into the sky. So filling out our formulas for the 60 kilogram Joe Pesci, we find that he'd be sent, surprisingly, about 4.5 meters, or almost 15 feet, into the air. Does that seem too high? Well, it isn't. This is all because Marv was also running, which would have a major impact on the total energy. And I mean, look, Harry ends up going up about 15 feet. Wow, Home Alone really nailed the physics of this trap. That's pretty cool. But Harry would never break the car, of course. The fall probably wouldn't kill him, though. Zero points on our death counter. Time for the brick throwing. Kevin throws the five pound bricks off of a three story building at Marvin. This means that they would slam into his face at around 50 kilometers an hour, or 30 miles an hour. When they hit him, they would have about an inch into his face to fully slow down, meaning that Marv is hit with 5,460 newtons of force, or about 1,200 pounds. Kevin may be inhuman, but these bandits literally cannot be human if they don't die from these. <laughs> Laugh out loud, rolling on the floor laughing, expanding abbreviations for quality commentary. The bricks could possibly decapitate Marv. It only takes around 500 pounds to crush a skull, so Marv would be long since crushed. One point per brick, and so that's four points for Marv on the death toll counter. Now the staple gun one. I spent an hour trying to figure this one out. I had to calculate the mass of a staple by measuring them through my computer screen to find their volume, to then use the material density and volume to find the mass. They are about 0.0002052725 kilograms per staple. They fly at Marv at roughly 30 meters per second, like most staple guns do. And they have about 0.012 meters into his skin to fully slow down. This puts them at a force of 7.7 .7 newtons. Pathetic. But the force is irrelevant in this case. You know why? Because pressure is what will be doing the piercing. To find pressure, you must know force and area. I'd gotten the force already, and so now I had to measure the tip of the carpentry staple through pixel measurements. The staple has a total area of 0.0000022262 square meters on its end, so it'll be entering Marv's skin with a pressure of... 
3.4 megapascals, or 500 PSI, enough pressure to easily puncture through the skin. Not deadly to Marv, but certainly a tad bit uncomfortable, so zero points. The foolish fool Harry then slips off of a ladder that's about two and a half stories up. The 60 kilogram Harry would land at 45 kilometers an hour and has about 0.53 seconds to fully come to a halt. So he'd be landing with a force of around 300 pounds on his upper spine and neck. Crunch indeed. But as it's only possibly deadly, we'll give this one a 0 0.5. 90 kilogram Marv falls one story into the basement and has 0 0.06 seconds to fully stop his speed. His final speed calculates to be around 7.7 .7 meters per second, meaning that his landing force is 10,400 newtons. Oh my god. That's beyond more than enough to permanently disfigure the face. That's like 2,300 pounds on the face. That's a lot. Concussed for life. One point for a clear death. Suddenly, Harry has a bunch of wrenches that fall on his head. Each wrench is at max 2.15 kilograms, and all of them fall only a few feet down onto Harry's head. The only buffering distance they have to fully stop their speed is the thickness of his toque, which I measured to be 1.5 inches. Formulating the formulae, we get a bunch of different forces for each wrench, but they all average out to be around 760 newtons, or 170 pounds of force. And that's enough to give him bruising around his skull, but we'll only give it a 0.5 on the point meter for the sake of ambiguity. Marvin proceeds to slip on a suspicious green slime and somehow slides far into a shelf of paint cans. Each can is around 10 pounds, and a few of them land on his face. Maybe this would be enough to slightly disfigure his nose, but nothing major. The rest of the shelf also lands on him, but his whole body takes it, so it wouldn't hurt him too badly. So, again, zero points. But then Marv is shocked electrically. Kevin turns his ACDC machine to 80 amperes, which is 800 times the lethal amount to humans. You see, when an electric current goes through humans, only about 0.1 amps will actually kill them. This machine puts out 80. Zap! Since Marv is wet with paint, he has an electrical resistance of 1000 ohms, and this would send out a voltage of 80,000 volts. Let's get insane for a moment. If Marv was being shocked for an entire month, he'd be able to power about with his electricity. I know it sounds high, but because of his insane current, in one month, it would do just that. Definitely one point for this one. Harry's hat is then lit on fire by a blowtorch. Using the ween, wine, win me, win win we, ween, wine, ween. Ween displacement formula, we see that a flame with this color has a wavelength of about 600 nanometers, which means 4500 degrees Celsius which would easily burn off his scalp. But then he sticks his head into a gasoline-filled toilet. Boom boom. Just how explosive is this? Average toilet bowls have seven gallons of space for a liquid and measuring, I got exactly that. Multiplying that volume by the density of gasoline gives us the liquid's mass. And if we know its mass, we can figure out the potential energy it could have in an explosion. The maximum of its explosiveness. And the formula says it's 895 megajoules of energy, or almost a quarter ton of TNT. That would blow his head off. One point. Marv pulls a 100 pound bag of what I am assuming is cement mix down onto his neck from 13.6 feet up above him. It would have an impact speed of about 32 kilometers an hour, and since it takes 0.12 seconds for it to fully stop on his head, it would crush his upper half with a crazy high force of 3400 newtons, or 760 pounds, enough to crush his skull, rip open his spine, and bend his back so far over he'd be a permanently frozen contortionist. One point. Harry falls from this ladder at an angle downwards. Using potential energy, rotational kinetic energy, and the conservation of energy, we know that his head would land at about 37.34 meters per second. After timing the landing, that's around 27,000 newtons. That is by far the highest force yet, and would definitely be enough to concuss him in the way it's done. I don't know about death though, as the way it's done is taken by his whole body, and he doesn't slam any vital organs too drastically. But the force is quite high nonetheless, meaning there is a chance of death if he lands in a certain way. 0.5 points. Then Marv and Harry are hit by a swinging cast iron pipe, and are sent flying down the stairs and into a massive hole down 10 feet. 
After an hour of tedious measuring, I found that the pipe would whack their faces at around 5.5 meters per second. I also figured out that the pipe was roughly 68 kilograms. And once I measured the impact time, I figured out that it would hit them with almost 2800 newtons, enough to easily break their jaws, and hard. But that's not all, there's more. The conservation of momentum states that this movement has to keep going into them. Using an insane looking formula, I figured it all out. The speed the pipe would send them back at is 4.7 meters per second. They fall 10 feet with an initial speed of that, and using the conservation of energy formulae, we know that both of them would land in the basement at 10.4 meters per second. Once again timing, we discover that Mark would hit the ground with 2550 newtons, and Harry would hit it with almost 2700. Then Kevin cuts the wire, and the pipe flies down at them at what I calculated to be 8.7 meters per second. The pipe has a buffering distance of a few inches as it hits their stomachs. This means that it crushes them with a force of 33,658 newtons. <sighs> so the face slam is so dangerous that we can give both a 0 0.5. The landing each gives them a 1, and the falling pipe warrants each a 0 0.5. This tool chest one is... Totally impossible. Apparently friction doesn't exist. But if it actually could break their noses by just going 1.83 meters per second, then we can figure out how heavy the tool chest could be. You see, in certain conditions, the nose can be broken with only 10 pounds. Not in this scenario, of course, but if it were, then the tool chest would only need to weigh about 1.64 kilograms. Definitely zero points. Not even much to calculate here. Finally, the paint can won. Harry falls 35 feet onto a lever, which sends the cans sky high to land on them both. So I used those lever formulas from before and discovered that technically, it should only send these 15 cans about 2.1 meters. But the fall is certainly deadly for both. Two more points. And the final trap? The birds. They can't exactly be calculated, but they wouldn't kill them, so that's it. We have our death tool using physics. Five to six deaths for Harry, and ten deaths for Marv. This is why I love physics. And we're done for now. I'll likely be back next year to do Home Alone 3. And I almost forgot. Merry Christmas. Unless, of course, you're these two. It's not very merry. Thanks for watching. Here you can check out some of my other recent theories. And until next time, I'm the Theorizer.